Good morning, Maniacs. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how we're building our bulkheads. For us, our bulkheads are the parts in the front, very, very front, and the very, very back. So, let's get to it. Previously on Gus the Struggle Boys. You really want to know, I'm full of self doubt. And to be honest, it has never brought me down. No, 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 no. I'm really glad I'm not walking around. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach a 2x2 two two to this area over here. We want them to come out just a little bit. So with the 2x2 two two and the piece of board that's going to go right here, it should come out just enough for us to be happy with it. Hold up. We're going to be attaching it right here, right here, right here, maybe right there, and right here. So I don't know how much of this we actually got on video, but we went ahead and created a piece that will go perfectly in this area. Uh, the reason why they get a lot of videos because I expected the front to be just like the back and the back just like the front, but it's not. The main difference is going to be this furring strips. The good thing about the front was that the furring strips fell right where this piece was going to fall, which means that basically any areas where the furring strip is, is going to be a straight line because the furring strips are a straight line. So I'm going to show you how I did the front and then I'm going to show you how I plan or intend to do the back. Main tool you're going to need is going to be a speed square. This speed square is going to be essential in helping you uh, decide what missionaries to take and where to take them. So let me show you how I did this. Along with the speed square, another thing you're going to want to have is a sick or a leftover piece that you know is straight on both sides. So this is how we did it. Since I know that all these pieces are straight, I'm going to want to get a measurement from here, 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 and all along each corner. Along with that, I'm also going to want to have those measurements marked out over here. So first, I know that this piece right here is going to be left open. So I'm going to leave a gap right here. Could put a marking right here and right here because the wood is going to fall on top of this. So I'm going to go ahead and get my speed square, place it right here making sure that this right here is touching the square part and I'm going to drag it all the way to where this piece of wood is matching up with the side of the 2x2. Two two. Once I have that I will mark this piece of wood and I will put a small marking on this piece of wood. I did this over here and over here making sure that we get this in each corner of a 2x2 two two, and you'll see those markings over here and I did this all along the side you'll find markings right here right here right here right here all along the side once I had this all marked up I don't have any measurements yet so what I do after this is get my measuring tape and measure along each one of these lines 
Now that I have the measurements, all I have to do is read out the measurements out to Meredith so that Meredith can go ahead and write them down. From there, we go ahead and transfer the measurements from up here to over here. So now you'll see that we have the lines along those measurements all the way across the piece of board. After transferring all of your markings from the 2 by 2s to your board, you're going to, with this bead square, do something very similar to what you did up there, except transfer those measurements onto the board. So if you see right here, we're going to have a line. We're going to go to the line that corresponds to that. For us, it's going to be this one right here. So now once we have the two corresponding measurements matching, I'm going to go ahead and draw a little line right here or dot. And we're going to do that all for all of our uh, lines and measurements that we have on here on the left side or the right side over here. So now that we have done that, it is very easy. All I would do after this is cut from one dot to the other straight line. And to mark that out, all I did was draw a straight line from one dot to the other. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston. One small step for my man. My athlete for me. big enough to fit your fluffy hair. <laughs> That's a hat big enough for Gus. It's a Gus hat. did back here that was different in the front was that we had to build up layers we originally just wanted to do one layer of two by two so it can just be a two by two attached to the metal but if we did that as you can see right here it wouldn't touch anything on top and then over here it wouldn't touch anything over here it wouldn't touch anything so we had to put the extra layer so it would at least touch this area over here so now we have to do something to make sure that we can go ahead and measure for this area over here. Not only were we able to do that, but by doing this, we were able to pretty much make sure that this area over here was a little bit deeper um, than the area in the front, which pretty much gives us more storage area, more storage room for whenever we put whatever it is that we put over here. So uh, it feels very sturdy. I, I can't really move it. I'm not gonna try to move it too much. 
the way that we made it sturdy is by attaching everything to this right here and adding pocket holes to this. This will be where the most load bearing area will be. Uh, if I was to just screw everything onto here, um, this wouldn't be very sturdy. Eventually it would be, actually be very flimsy. But by adding the pocket screws over here, it attaches this area over here, which is very sturdy, to the area over here, which pretty much holds this up, as well as attaching this to each other. So similarly to how we did the front, we're going to do it the back. And the only difference is that we don't have certain points that we're going to mark from. We did one inch from zero to ten, and then from there we went on five inch increments. And then once we got to the middle, we went five inch increments, and then once we get to ten, we got ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to draw a line that's two inches above the bottom. The reason why I'm doing that is because if you saw, when I was doing my marks, I was doing my marks on the back or the side from the top of the two by two, not the bottom of the two by two. So I need to make sure that the top of the two by two aligns with this. So if I was to do it from here, from the bottom of this board to my dimensions, it would be a half, uh, an inch and a half too small because the two inch, two, the two by two is actually a one and a half by one and a half. So I am going up by two inches just to make sure that I have some wiggle room and I can cut that off, uh, the half inch off if I need to. One small step for my man. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston. This right here is the perfect curve, but right here, this uh, support beam, or whatever you're gonna call it, it goes underneath the thing. So it is, yeah, I'm just gonna get a little notch out. out. And it looks like after that, everything should be okay. okay. All right, guys, welcome back to Paco's Patio Shop. Today, I'm gonna show you how to be making things like this. This is gonna be the cubicle that's gonna be standing in the front section, and we're gonna be making one exactly like this, just the other way. We've already pre-cut some of the pieces, but I'm going to be showing you how this machine behind us, the Meyer saw, is going to be making this a lot easier than just a regular circular saw. Before we get started, we have to talk about how we determine the dimensions. If you see right here, drawn on this small piece of wood, they're going to show you that it's going to be 10 inches tall on one side, 6 inches tall on the other side, and 4 inches, four inches long in total. The top part right here, we don't know quite yet, but we're not going to determine that one yet. The way we determined the dimensions is we actually went into the cubicle itself and determined how high it should be while still giving the cables and hoses that might go in there enough room to travel to where they needed to be. We also determined the depth, which is going to be 5 inches, by getting the measuring tape and measuring inside and seeing what's the least amount that it could go without us having to scrape off any of the insulation or the least amount of insulation. So that's how we got those measurements. So we've already pre-cut the pieces that we need to for the sides and for the bottom. This is going to be the side that's going to be 10 inches high, 6 inches high, and 4 and 10 inches long. This one, although it's supposed to be 14 inches long, we have to account for the width of these. Each one of these is half an inch, so we're going to go ahead and take a half an inch of each side, making it 13 inches long. So in total, whenever we put this together, it'll be 14 inches long. You can't forget about that, because the thickness of the wood will add size to your actual cubicle. 
To get a reliable dimension, what I do is I usually get the tape measure, lock it, and I go ahead and I measure the top and the bottom for the measurement that I need. In this instance, I need a six inch piece. So I'll get top and bottom, and I'll get a six inch piece on both. And just for extra precaution, I'll go ahead and use a speed square and draw a line from both dots, making sure that they match on both sides. If they do, then I know that this piece itself is square, and I'll be able to go ahead and make a straight square cut. So I go ahead and draw my line. And now that I've drawn my line, what I want to do, or what I like to do, is I like to draw an X on a part that I don't need, so that I know to cut on that side of the line. I am very happy to have a miter saw, because the miter saw will ensure that I get a straight cut all the way through, and a cut that won't wobble in or wobble out. So, now that I've drawn my line, I have to make sure that I go ahead and cut on the outside of the line, and cut all the way through. And now I have a straight line that is six inches on both sides, making sure that it's square all the way around. And now that I have all three pieces, the bottoms and the sides, pre-cut, I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling them together. For that, I'm gonna use my Craig tool, which is gonna help me make some pocket holes so that I can go ahead and have a more secure hold. We have drilled the pocket holes into the wood. Now, let's attach it. So for the top part, as you can see, we're going to have to measure the angle that this falls in right here so it can be as flush with the piece, uh, with the side piece as possible. The way I'm going to do that is by using this square. This right here has little dots on the side with measurements. They fall in ranges of 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, all the way to 90 degrees. This right here are actual degrees to which something falls in. So in order for us to measure the angle that this needs to be cut at, I'm going to use my speed square, place it right here. And I'm going to see where this number falls on. Right here, I see that it falls on the 75 mark. I'm going to subtract that from 90, which gives me 15. And I'm going to cut this at a 15 degree angle. In order for us to be able to cut that piece at an angle, we're going to switch the setting on the miter saw to 15 degrees. What I'll do now that I cut that piece at an angle is place it as close to the edge as possible, maybe even hang it out by a centimeter, and just mark right here where the edge would fall. To be on the safe side, go ahead and mark it just a little bit out because you can always cut more, but you can't cut less. I'll now draw a line and place my blade on the other side of the line to make sure that I cut on the right side. So I've cut it. It fits in here fairly well. Now I just have to assemble it together. So this is how we made our small cubicles. Now we'll go ahead and show you how we attach them to the actual headpiece. All right, so now we're back in the bus and the first thing we're gonna do is dry fit our shelves. So I'm just going to place them in here, make sure that they fit well, that they're not sticking up too much, and see how far up or how far down I'll be placing these. So this fits fairly well. I did have to, to scrape out just a little bit of insulation for this because we're going to put it back on this and a couple of the parts are in the middle um, do stick out further than the sides. And then I will go ahead and mark right here where I think it'll go. All right. Now, the last thing I want to do is make sure that this is centered between these two boards. So I'm going to go ahead and mark out how wide that gap is. Right here is about two inches. So I'm going to make sure that I leave at least one inch on each side. Yes. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston. One small step for my man. man. Yes. Yes. What we are going to do is cut it 
a little bit smaller like that it can have a trim that's naturally on here and I have to worry about the screws coming out through the side of here we have drawn the outline as well as the measurements of a quarter inch inwards so that we can cut within this square, not within the out square. Like that, we can have that lip that I talked about. Yes. Columbia, this is Houston. One small step for my man. My athlete for me. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston. One small step for my man. My athlete for me. Look at it! It's amazing! Does it fit well? Uh, it feels like it fits well. Nice! You want to hold it right here so you can see? One of the things you didn't see was us putting up the actual bulkheads. The way we did that was we measured out where the studs would be and we attached it to the studs. Pretty simple, right? With that being said, we hope that you enjoyed this video, find it entertaining or educational. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give it a big, 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 big thumbs up. If you have any comments for us, any tips, anything that you want to let us know about that maybe would make this process a lot easier for us or for anybody else, please leave it down in the comment section. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing. If you're not, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we post our videos, usually every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock central. Also, don't forget to follow our social medias at map.gps, gus.gps, and mapgpsblog.com. And as always, don't forget to enjoy life, stay positive, and keep going places. So close! Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston. One small step for my man. I have to wait for me.